think we can start. Um, so I think everybody read my emails, but my name is Julia Yamaguchi. I am taking over this project from Rebecca. I am actually born and raised in Tokyo, Japan. So Japanese is my first language. And I'm very happy to help this tour because I've been to most of the places that you're all going. So um, rough agenda for tonight. Uh, we will go through the the first ses session for those people who maybe missed um, very quickly. But um, then we'll go to the questions and concerns from the Google form. And then at the end, we'll try to vote um, for which day is in May. And then we can do questions um, after. OK, so I will share my screen. So for those who like participate in the first session, it's probably the same thing, but um, we'll go quickly. So um, we're planning to do Tokyo first, uh, day one to day four. Um, you'll go to these places, so Meiji Jingu, um, Asakusa and stuff. Um, and then for in Tokyo, you will also have a free time. Uh, we don't have the um, itinerary yet, so we don't know which dates, but you'll definitely have a free time. And then we'll go to Mount Fuji and Hakone, day three. Um, for this one, I know that you won't have a free time, but you will be able to go to the Mount Fuji um, fifth station, Olakudani Valley, Hakone Ropeway, and boat cruise on Lake Ashi. Then after you'll be going to Hiroshima for day four and six. Um, these are the places you'll be seeing. And then, Kyoto, day six to eight. Um, these are the temples and shrines that you'll see. Um, and then Kyoto, you, Kyoto and Hiroshima, you'll have a free time as well. And then Nara, day six, you also have a free time. You'll, uh, we're planning to go to these places. We'll maybe like add more stuffs, but. Um, and then Osaka is the end. Uh, we'll have a free time. And then maybe recommended is World um, Expo. And uh, so so that's the itinerary that we're planning. Um, we are planning to meet at uh, the airport, Narita or Haneda. Narita is the one outside of the city. So to come into the, the, the city in, the, in Tokyo, um, it costs, or well, it takes about like two hours by train and car. So um, Haneda will be better because it's only like 40 or 45 minutes to the city. Um, but I guess the tickets are more expensive because the airport is in the city, um, but yeah. And then um, from Tokyo to Hiroshima, we'll be using Shinkansen, the bullet train. Um, and they have an overnight bag or carry on and luggage will be shipped to Kyoto Hotel. Um, yeah, so Hiroshima to Kyoto, there'll be bullet train, Kyoto to Nara, uh, their uh, coach and then same thing, Kyoto to Osaka, Osaka Airport, okay. Um, and then accommodations, um, is this is what we're planning. So in Tokyo, this will be Grand Prince Hotel Shin Takanawa is the place hotel and then day four is eight. Um, this will be in Hiroshima Hotel, Grand Via Hiroshima. And then Miyako Hotel Kyoto, Hachijo for the Kyoto. And then day eight to nine hotel. Oh my, Mon Monterey Grass, I can't even, sorry. I can't even read English, but this will be in Osaka. Um, and then in the last session, there was a question like, will this be like ryokan style, like the tr traditional Japanese? I believe these are all like Westerns. Um, so if you do want that kind of experience, it might be better to book it um, after or before this trip. And then for the rates, um, it says 4,000 or 5,000 here, but um, this is really low numbers, and um, I think we're expecting about maybe 30, close to 40-ish people. So um, we're thinking about maybe 3,000 or 30, 3,500 per person Canadian dollars. That's what we're thinking, but it also depends on how many people is coming. So nothing's confirmed yet. That's just um, what we're thinking. 
I think and with the exchange rate changes, yeah. it's going to be my right now it's around thirty eight hundred. Yeah. Mm, yeah, because it's a Japanese yen quoted. <laughs> And then what's included in this tour is, oh, sorry, um, tour, prices in, tour pro price includes eight breakfasts and two lunches, one piece luggage transfer between Tokyo and Kyoto Hotel, and then admissions. Um, what is not included is airfare, so you will have to book your own. Um, if you do need assistance, um, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you book through uh, together, maybe using uh, Zoom. Um, and then insurance is also not included. Drinks on meals is not included. Meals not mentioned in the included section. Okay. Um, another one, what is not included is all participants would have to book their own flights. Yeah, have the options to arrive earlier and or stay longer in Japan. And in JC, yeah, it's the same thing. Um, okay. Now, proposed date. Uh, uh, May 7th or 10th, and then October is too far away, so we'll skip. Um, yeah, so that's what we went through um, last session. Now, from after that, I sent out a Google form and got some questions and concerns. So I'll just read it out. And blue is my answer. So... Um, first question was, during free time, how hard is it to get around as someone who looks Japanese but doesn't speak it? So it, this really depends on cities, because um, bigger cities like Tokyo, Kyosaka, uh, Kyoto, um, Osaka will have, most of the people will like understand English, not like they're super fluent, but people will understand if you go to like other small towns and like other areas, then um, not many people understand, but this tour, you will be all going to like major cities. So I think it's fine, but you can always like have um, like an app, like Google Translate and everything. And I think it should be fun. So just part of the preparation of this, we'll offer those sessions by Zoom, uh, identifying the apps that you should be uh, loading onto your uh, programs. That includes translation apps. It also includes... Uh, uh, mapping apps and that kind of stuff. And then uh, for this particular tour, my wife and I will be on it for the duration of the tour. And we're there to help you plan uh, your free time. So in some cases, I think maybe a group of us would want to go somewhere together so we can coordinate that. If you want to chart your own path and get a get to a location, uh, between my wife and I will make sure that you uh, get the directions that you need to get to the right spot and uh, uh, provide any assistance for so we'll be accompanying you uh, throughout the entire trip, and uh, that's what we'll be there to help you with. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then next question was safety and availability of hospitals if required. So this was a good question, but um, I will try to inquire with the tour operator to confirm whether the guide or any staff members are certified in first aid. And then for hotels, um, since it's all like major cities, um, I don't, I'm not too worried, but I will ask the guide to like prepare a list of, um, like hotels, uh, not sorry, hotels, hospitals for each city we, we visit. Um, and then recommended yoga retreats, um, in Okinawa. So we're not actually planning to visit Okinawa for this trip, that uh, trip, but when I searched on Google for like yoga retreats in Okinawa, I found so many options available in English. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Next one. For those of us in Toronto area, is there any possibility of joining in Calgary rather than Vancouver? How would a family group of 10 be accommodated? Are there any, oh, are there entry documents or visitor requirements and can they be obtained with their assistance? So I think they're talking about a lay layover. Um, so since we will be meeting in Japan, you can choose to have a layover anywhere, including Calgary. Um, for a family group of 10, we can arrange accommodation in pairs of two, or we can try to request the tour um, company to provide a large room uh, for the family, but we'll see. Um, and then the regarding entry documents, if you are staying for less than six months, there are no special documents required. So you do not have to apply for any visa 
if you're not staying um, over six months. Um, but if you do need any assistance with um, travel arrangements, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Just that, just that further. So there's enough people from a particular city that would allow because the the flight this cost doesn't include the flights there and back. So the tour would start in Tokyo and end in Osaka, and then your own flight arrangements would have to be made. But uh, if there's a group of you, and that's what we'll find out as we go through this process and people register, we might find that there's enough to get a group rate at the uh, with the airlines. So we can take a look at that. Um, and the other thing is, I guess, with the entry, uh, there is a online entry that uh, you can use to uh, fill up before you arrive in Japan. It's, it's sort of like the uh, uh, same as Canada, where you, you can fill out all the information online and then you get a QR code and that'll make it easier for you to get through uh, the Japanese customs. So uh, as part of this um, orientation, we'll show you what that looks like and how to fill that out give you the necessary information to fill that out. And as long as you're a Canadian traveler, that yeah, there shouldn't be any problems with visas. Um, if your citizenship is not Canadian, then we just have to make sure that uh, there's no visas required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you're American, same thing. You do not require anything. Um, yeah, same as Canadian. Okay. Um, flight booking, yes. So please um, contact me if you do need help. Um, for this one, it says a uh, group discount. Because we're not, because the um, airfare is not included in the tour, we don't have any group discounts, but we can definitely help you find um, a ticket. Um, next one, it says, may I bring two non-Japanese friends and my partner non-Japanese on this tour? Another question was, my husband is Japanese, however, I am French Canadian. Am I allowed to join this tour with him? Thank you. Of course, um, you do not have to be Japanese or a member of NAJC. Um, everybody is welcome. So bring anybody you like. And then next one, uh, we do not speak or understand Japanese. I have never been to Japan. No worries. And this is why we're planning this tour for you. Um, and one of the preparation sessions you might do is actually have one session about key phrases. Uh, so if you want to at least try to learn some of the basic phrases and, you know, at least say that you can't speak Japanese and Japanese, uh, we'll probably be able to teach you that as well. So, again, as part of the lead up to this tour, we'll have uh, some Zoom sessions and they'll be optional. But um, if you want to uh, ask certain questions or visit certain areas or have a few lessons in Japanese, uh, I'm sure we can incorporate that as part of the preparation for this tour. Next question, it says, how many temples are on the tour? Just wondering if you visit one temple, they're more or less the same. Um, yes, you will visit at least one temple or shrine in most cities on the tour. Um, but while some may look similar at first, um, each site has its own unique meanings and traditions. So it's a little different. Um, last one was, what time are the breakfasts? Um, we haven't finalized anything yet but um i'm thinking um it will be scheduled to range from like 6 30 to 8 30 um in the morning depending on the date's activities say like you have to get on the shinkansen the bullet train um at like nine then maybe we'll have to you know have the breakfast at 6 30 or like another day if you have the free time in the morning, you can have breakfast at like 9 a.m. So it really depends. Um, since we're already at questions, maybe I'll just stop sharing. And if you have questions, we can do that right now. So you can mute yourself or raise the hand if you have anything. Um, there is a comment that says, Will you send us this PowerPoint by email right after the session? Yes, we will send you this recording. It will be uploaded on YouTube. Um, we will, if we do decide on the date today, we will also send out that email too. And yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, I, prefer, I was going to, you said you, you, you'll be sending the, the PowerPoint and the recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect, thank you, because I'm more visual, so I feel this resource is very helpful to me. <laughs> All good, yeah, we will definitely send you that. Thank you. Okay, um, let's go to Rosemary.
Hi, are any of these cities rural? Or are they all very urban? Very, it's all like major cities, like the biggest, not biggest, but like all, all the biggest, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. We, we're then, trying to design this tour to give you a taste of the uh, uh, major uh, sightseeing areas in Japan. Um, if this one goes well, uh, there was plans to maybe uh, in a couple of years time, maybe do a supplementary tour, which would focus on the rural areas or possibly go to a sake brewery or uh, those type of things. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely quite a different uh, in the, in the um, countryside versus the cities, but this is, I'm really focused on the cities to just get you whet your appetite <laughs> because the um, the rural environment and the, the hotels and those type of things are quite different. Yeah. Nope. That's good. Great. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Let's go, Karen. Hi, everyone. Karen from Victoria. Um, my question is, if you're traveling as a single or if you're a family with an odd number, will you be looking at trying to partner up someone for shared accommodation? We can do that. Or if you do prefer a single room. Um, you will just have to pay the extra. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. A single add-on is there's this fifteen hundred dollar extra because all these rates are quoted as double odds. But you know, mm -hmm. if you are single and there's another single that was willing to share, uh, we'd probably definitely introduce you to each other and <laughs> see if that would work out. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I will read the question in the chat. For the meals provided, will special dietary needs be provided for? Um, I haven't talked about the diet um, meals yet, but um, I will definitely ask the tour company in Japan about that. Okay. Um, in the last Zoom, there was mention of a baseball game or sumo match. Is there a possibility doing a visit? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, we haven't really find not, haven't really gone through the details of like what exactly we're doing. Um, but there was a lot of um comments about sumo, so we'll see what we can do, but not sure yet. I think that there is a sumo tournament uh, in Tokyo in May, I believe. Uh, let me see what the schedule is. Mm -hmm. May 11th to the 25th. So uh, at the end of the tour, if you're going back to Tokyo, I think there's an opportunity there to uh, uh, join up because the two, the two sumo tour uh, tournaments are done uh, on certain dates uh, and different locations. So in May, there is one in uh, Tokyo at the end. If you go back to Tokyo at the end of the tour, then there's a possibility of you being able to go to one of those events. And then I think the baseball season will be started already by then. And um, I think almost all the cities that we're visiting will have a team. Tokyo, Osaka, Hiroshima do have teams. And uh, there's free times at the night. And uh, you know, that's something that could be an optional activity if you want to go. Uh, Japanese baseball is, is quite a different atmosphere from the American ones. There's a lot of noise, <laughs> a lot of activity. And it's pretty fun to actually go see what it is. So. If those, that's of interest to some people, uh, we'll know, obviously, if, if you signed up for the tour and you're interested in that, that's something that we'll definitely try to secure tickets for in advance. Awesome. Um, next one, it says, could a Kabuki theater performance be found at the time of the year in any of the cities? Um, I'm not an expert, but it don't remember if it's like a seasonal thing. I always just thought they do it not all year, but Kevin, do you know? I know I there's know. Kabuki theater in, in three of the cities, I think Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to look at what the, is playing there because I know it's definitely happening at certain times of the year. So again, if that's an interest, then Probably that's something that we'll want to capture uh, uh, as part of the uh, part of the next phases as you sign up, and then those are the things that we can definitely investigate for you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. If there is no more questions, I think we can try to decide the date. 
So um, what what we talked with the tour company in Japan was um, May 7th or the 10th. Um, earlier than that, there's a the golden week. So you do want to try to avoid because like all the Japanese people are like vacation. So um, yeah, we're trying to do after that. Um, so I will send out the pool. Hold on. Does everybody see um, this question in their screen? Yes, I do. Perfect. So you can start um, submitting your answers. I can't find it. You can't find it? No. Maybe because you're, oh, let me see. May, May the 7th is a Wednesday and the 10th is a Saturday. Is it better to travel on one day as opposed to the other? I know flight tickets are cheaper on like uh, right. Monday. Yeah, because Friday is like the everybody's traveling on Friday. So but Wednesday might be cheaper, but I don't think it will make the, the big difference. And my other question is, how are we all going to arrive at the same time to meet at the airport? Uh, yeah, I, I think basically... Um, uh, we'll talk to the tour company about um, how that's staged. Like, I know some people may want to arrive earlier. Um, the way this tour would start is we'll pick a definite des destination as a starting point in Tokyo itself. Um, if you're arriving at different times, like beforehand, then you just have to find your way to get to that location on that day. And obviously, we'll help you out in terms of giving you directions. Um, otherwise, if you are all landing on the same day, then... Um, once we've got all the arrival times, we'll talk to the tour company and see uh, how they're going to arrange that pickup. Um, there's especially in Narita, which is quite a bit of ways, but the, the transportation system, like uh, the either the train or the uh, shuttle bus, is actually quite efficient, um, and they run on a regularly scheduled basis. So, um, you know, if you are arriving uh, on that particular day in, at Narita, for example, I assume that I think that. I one of my my wife or I would probably be at the airport all day helping you uh, get to the <laughs> downtown location. Uh, but again, once once we um, identify the dates, and then we'll work with each person to see if you want to come earlier or if you want to just come at the same time. And then um, if you want to spend more time at the end in Tokyo, that that's kind of the option because the tour will end in Osaka. If you're doing a round trip ticket to Tokyo, then you probably have to take the train going from Osaka back to Tokyo. But if you wanted to explore more of Tokyo, then my suggestion would probably be to have everyone arriving around the same or on the same day in, to in Tokyo. And then we can meet up with everybody and, uh, uh, and then kind of get them to the meeting point together. I have a question. Um, I, I attend, I'm someone who tends to, to need more time when I fly overseas and go through jet lag. I've d done the Asian thing many times in my life. <laughs> so I'm probably going to at least try to arrive a couple, at least three or four days early, to be honest. I'm just wondering if there might be a few of us that want to do that, if we could maybe even have that as an added option, that we could have a group rate at a hotel in Tokyo, maybe with easy access to the airport where we could meet you after or something. Um, I, I don't know how busy, it also depends on what the schedule is for the first day of the tour because I'd probably sleep through it <laughs> knowing me. So um, I don't wanna miss a thing. So I'm gonna try to go early, yeah. I have a comment and a question. It's, my name is Wylan Lo. I'm America's, uh, I'm gonna be America's roommate. And I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to change my name on the screen, but uh, my comment is this with respect to uh, what Mariko said. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be game for uh, arriving a few days early uh, just to get myself back on my feet and, and awake. And my question is, um, we're crossing the date line. So do we arrive? Um, so if we start out in Toronto, which is where Marika and I are, uh, it probably takes us about 12 hours to get there, if if not more. Are we arriving? The next day, usually. Yeah. Le less a day or, or more than a day? I can't, I can't it, remember. It's adding a day on the way over. Adding, adding a day. So if we leave on a Tuesday, we arrive on a Thursday? 
or Wednesday, probably. Like it's well, it's about a for the twelve hours anyway. Yeah, it, it's a fifteen to sixteen hour time difference. So when you're leaving, that's how far ahead Japan is already. So then when you add right. the twelve hours on the flight, then it's probably going to put you into the next day. So, so we we uh, missed a day in transit. Yeah. So usually when I go there, it's um, like I'm usually leaving kind of just like one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I when I go through Vancouver anyway. Uh, when I go through Calgary, I gotta leave in the morning. And then you, you're planning to basically arrive. You'll be probably closer to evening when you arrive. And then when you hop on the bus, by the time you get to the hotel, it's probably bedtime. By then. <laughs> so you, that that's the way I've seen it, anyways. So when you leave, it's gonna be probably morning or early afternoon. And then by the time you land, it'll be probably uh, early or late afternoon or early evening. And then you, know, you can just go straight to bed and catch up on your sleep. And then by the time you wake up the next morning, it'll be morning. Um, I usually find going to Japan isn't as bad because of that, where you can sleep. Whereas when you come back, you usually leave in the evening and then you're arriving kind of in the morning because you're gaining all that time back. And then that, I think if you have jet lag, that's probably more severe when you're coming back versus going, but I guess it depends on the person. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if you're obviously, uh, um, if there's a lot of people that are interested and confirming on this tour, we'll definitely be working with everybody to say that if you want to come a few days ahead, um, you know, if you're going through Narita, then that'll give you enough time to get to downtown Tokyo or uh, something like that. And uh, you'd rather be in Tokyo for a few days rather than Narita. There's not much out in Narita to see. So, um, and then that'll give you a few days to have free time and recover. And uh, um, I expect that my wife and I would already be there anyway. Uh, so obviously, if you're coming in earlier, we'll try to. Yeah, yeah, help you with that. Yeah, Kevin, um, I, I am with Ma, um, Mariko and uh, Wailan. I'd like to arrive earlier. And then can we just meet? Can you arrange for us to have like two or three days at the hotel in Tokyo? Yep. I'm sure we can do that. Oh, okay. So we could just fly in a few days earlier, go to the hotel in Tokyo. And that would all be all. I think that's true. That's great. Yeah. And sleep. Awesome. Okay. So we'll go back to the questions. There are three of us. Can we stay in the same room? Probably depends on the hotel. Um, if there's like two bed and like a sofa bed, then maybe yes. But I don't think most but, of the places will have a sofa bed. Well, the trip, the trip company did offer a triple option in the pricing. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of arrangements that looks like, but uh, we can definitely inquire. Uh, hotels can vary. Some of the hotels have pretty small beds, <laughs> uh, like a twin size or whatever, but uh, uh, we'll definitely get all the specifications once we get confirmation. Like, because the trip company is waiting for us to confirm the participants. And then once they confirm the participants, they'll be looking at booking. So then uh, we can definitely get an idea of what the actual hotel is going to be able to accommodate. But in, in their quote, they have said that a tour booking, a triple occupancy booking is going to be probably about $150 to $160 cheaper per person uh, throughout the whole trip. So uh, it's a bit cheaper. You do save a little bit for that. But, uh, uh, and we'll see what kind of accommodations they're going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I guess, do you think we'll have time to experience onsen during the tour trip? Um, we don't have the details yet, but since we're going to Hakone and like um, Mount Fuji area, that's like they're famous for that onsen places. So I don't think like um, they will skip that, but I just don't have the details. I'm pretty sure you will ha um, experience that though. It sounds good because I heard a lot of good things about it. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I myself am not an onsen fan myself, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I heard a lot of good things. I it's a great way to you to relax, things like that. Because at in my Ottawa Gatineau area, we have at the Nordic Expo, there's one onsen section, but it's not that big compared to the one in Japan. It's just a fake onsen. <laughs> the word of caution: the onsens there are. You have to remove all your clothing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, your yeah uh, that's right. <laughs> um, let's see the next question. Uh, what is the best way to convert Canadian dollars to yen? Oh, I just go to those like exchange places, but 
Kevin, would you have an answer? Yeah, like my wife and I also have a banking account. We deal with a foreign currency trader, so we can give you a quote as to what we can get as a rate, and um, essentially um, we can arrange for monies to be available in Japan. Um, so, yeah, we can go to a bank there, and money, and uh, uh, so if we if we know what you're looking for from that perspective, um, you know we can arrange that for advance. Like I noticed, the yen is fluctuating quite a bit nowadays. It's starting to go strengthen now, or at least the Canadian dollar is weakening a little bit. So it's not as strong as it used to be, but it's definitely stronger than it was uh, over the past few years. So we're still above par. Um, so you're going to get more yen to the dollar. Than, like, well, I think it's at 105 or 106 yen for the dollar. Rate. Um, credit cards are also quite widely used in most places. Um, there might be, but cash is always recommended because there's going to be some places that, especially some restaurants and stuff like that, they don't uh, accept credit cards. But there's quite a bit of acceptance now with credit cards and there's also a um, something called like a suka app it's a like a, it's like a, something you add to your wallet and um, you can load money on that with your credit card and then you can then tap and load it's sort of like having a debit card in japan uh, there's a few options and again in part of the preparatory session we'll let you know about what kind of things are there are there for that and um, you know we'll show you how to use those as well kevin how much yen do you suggest that we bring um, depends. <laughs> do you How much really you're going to buy? Yeah. Um, a couple but, hundred yen a day, or dollars worth of yen a day might be. And again, if we need to, uh, uh, if you need to always obtain yen, then we have access to kind of an ATM there through our banking account. So we can always pull money if we need to. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want you don't want to have lots of cash with you at the same time, but you know if if, if I'm there, I probably want to have you know eight hundred bucks worth of yen, perhaps to cover. The... Mm. I'm thinking most of the places because it's a bigger city, they will take um, cards. It's more like those street food or like local like small places. They don't take cards. Um, if it's like ten days, I will probably do like um 300 or to 500 canadian dollars um but convert that to yen in cash and then rest will be on cards i think that's yeah that's what i would do because again most of the like souvenir places restaurants will take card it's just those smaller places will not yeah thank you i know that i know that my visa card um charges just a flat out exchange uh, fee mm -hmm. and gives a pretty poor um, exchange rate. Oh. Um, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, was, I wasn't paying attention when you might have been talking about um, accessing um, our bank accounts in Canada. Uh, is that possible with the ATMs in these Japanese cities or Yes, because my partner had, um, he doesn't have a Japanese account. And he had to withdraw money from his Canadian. So, okay. yes, yeah. Like, but if, like it is in many countries in Europe and yeah. But okay. if you don't have like a travel card or if you have like a bad exchange rate, um, maybe all cash, mm -hmm. not all cash, but cash might be better if that's the case. Okay, do some research. Thanks. <laughs> like, you know, if you're really caught in a pinch, you know, um, again, like if you can need transfer funds or whatever, they'll be one way we can then <laughs> give you money in Japanese yen. Um, the one thing, obviously, when you're overseas there, you know, with the cell network and stuff like that, you might not necessarily uh, want to use your cell phone, per se, because of the roaming charges or whatever. So uh, that's the one thing, though, that you can get like pocket Wi Fi or you can get an eSIM or whatever. But then um, sometimes when you're trying to do online banking, it sends you that code. And sometimes you, it sends it to you by text. And if you don't get those text messages, then you're kind of stuck as well. So, but, uh, Yeah, you also want to have a GPS yeah. <laughs> working on your cell phone if, you, if you're if somebody who likes to wander. So I haven't figured that one out. But is there a lot of Wi-Fi available like, easily in public uh, spaces, like general? They're available. Um, but sometimes it's spotty, sometimes it's time limited. 
um, the pocket Wi-Fi, which you can get from the airport and just carry around with you, uh, I find works the best because it works on trains and that kind of stuff. Um, or if you're just wanting to do uh, some text and browsing, like eSIM cards uh, work pretty good too. Like, um, I've tried a couple of those as well. So but how again, does like, the pocket Wi-Fi work? Well, at the airport, they have kind of a little pocket device that uh, essentially allows you access to a Wi-Fi network. So you just, I think we've paid about $100 or a little bit more than that for a week. Uh, and then you carry that around with you. and You, you basically have a Wi-Fi network in your pocket. And then you can connect. Uh, it's usually, I think, one device at a time, but you can connect up to that. And then it has usage, so it monitors that. Yeah, because I think it could be helpful for buying train tickets or uh, when we're on our own or uh, riding the local transportation. I, I was just in Norway and I, I had to use my Wi-Fi to do my phone to do all of that. So I really and, needed to have cell phone service or Wi-Fi. Yeah. The eSIM is actually works pretty good and it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and I, when I was in Japan, I was able to use the eSIM and the Suica wallet card. And it, it's like tap on, tap off. Like the complicated thing is the train travel in Japan is based on distance and number of stops and stuff like that. So instead of trying to figure that out, though, you just tap on with your, you load the app on your phone, you tap on, and then you tap off and it deducts it automatically. So you don't really have to worry about anything. So again, <laughs> these are the kind of things that will, as we get closer to the day, we'll prepare you for. And, okay. um, you know, if you really want to get cash, but you don't want to be carrying that around, um, I'm sure like we can we can do a bulk purchase and then um, uh, have that available for you kind of on demand. And at the end of the trip, if you don't need any yen, like we can definitely do a buyback because you know we, we just have an account there. So uh, if you really want to have it set up that way, I'm sure we can uh, set up an arrangement so that we can have the yen ready for you when you arrive. And then if you need more, uh, I guess you can just send an e-transfer to us. We can just in Canada, we can trans transfer that over. That's really nice. Thank you. When you go to, Kevin, when you go to Japan, do you uh, get a new SIM card for your cell phone? Um, well, the, the way the eSIM works is that you purchase that in Canada before you leave, and then it, it gets attached to your phone. I don't have to change anything out. Um, I think other people can get the actual SIM and change that out too, but I've just done it on my phone and done it electronically. So it's just getting an app. And then you activate an eSIM on your phone. And then when you get back, you switch it back. That's all. But, uh, How do you but, spell this? But it's just E is electronic. So E dash S I M usually. Oh, I see. Okay. And, um, but it, it's, it's, what I've used it for is primarily just text and browsing. It's, uh, I don't use it to get voice calls or anything. So if you want to do it that way, then, you know, the roaming might be a better way option kevin it's cheryl nakamura oh, hi you, cheryl hi do you do you get the eSIM before uh you arrive in japan or you get it when you're in japan uh, i usually get it before okay. because yeah. um, once you get into japan as soon as you activate your network you might get a roaming charge so i usually get it up and running like in vancouver or calgary just before i leave if i in the, in the right. airport i probably just get it set up and then uh it's ready to go when I land. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, for these eSIMs or pocket Wi-Fi, um, I can definitely create something for you before the trip. Um, for eSIMs, I always use Air Al oh, Um, it's an app. Um, I've used it to like Europe, Mexico, Japan, oh, everywhere. Um, and it works perfectly. I had no issues. So um I will try to make um something for you to like install and how it works and everything just before the trip. So thank you. Yeah. Um let's go, Mariko. Sorry. Oh my gosh. So um you know, uh, can I go uh I lost my question. Can I go back later when you come back in my mind? Thank you. Sorry about that. All good. Okay, any other questions? Sorry, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I was just 
it's okay. Mariko to Mariko. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to say, uh, I think it'd be really great. I hope that you're going to have a, a, you're going to have a meeting to prep, prep all of us with all of these little things uh, together. It might be more time efficient for you. <laughs> That's true. And, <laughs> and very appreciated, I think. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's go back to Mariko. Yes. Uh, yeah, now uh, my question came back to my mind, Julia. I'm just wondering, in what time exactly we are you guys? I just approximately what time you guys are can, can, thinking to leave for Japan because me, I live area that is not close to the airport. So I'm just, I'm just wondering what, what in in what time are you thinking of approximately to leave for Japan? Like when to leave Japan? Yeah, for the tour, yeah. Because I heard yeah. that there's people that are, oh, we like to leave earlier or something. I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh. It really depends on like you. Like if you want to arrive early, that you can do that. Or if you want to stay longer, or if you just want to come to the tour, it really depends on you. Yeah, it's me. Like I, um, Again, yeah, I see. Yes, I'm just wondering because me, I live in area Ottawa that is quite far away from the airport. So I'm just wondering that uh, it won't be too late if the if the tour won't be leaving too late in the day. <laughs> yeah, if you're worried, um, maybe arrive like a, a day earlier or yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. And I was going to say that I agree with the other Mariko. It would be good to have another meeting to to be well prepared for the, the tour trip because cause it, it's, it's a nice experience at some time. You know what, you just, it's a bit, uh, it could be nervous. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, We're, we'll be planning several sessions actually. And, you know, for those that don't need that information, they don't have to attend, it'll be optional. But uh, the key is, I think, for us to really identify if we have enough to get the tour going and to confirm everything. That's the first thing. And then the second thing would be then uh, uh, we'll have a series of sessions on different topics uh, and we'll let you know about that. Because that's the difference with, between this kind of a tour versus another tour package. Like we want to really make this uh, worry free and uh, <laughs> support you as much as you can. And, you know, this will be the first one we're going to be doing. So obviously we want to spend a lot of time making sure that uh, everything's covered. So uh, there'll be a number of sessions like this, different topics. Uh, leading up to the tour departure date so that everyone is uh, uh, covered and all their questions are answered. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, awesome. I just, I do see there's a couple other questions in the chat. So about Google Translate. Um, Google Translate is a good app to load. I find it's really good for translating written stuff. Uh, I don't, last time I was there last, uh, in, in January, I didn't find it so great for uh, verbal translations back and forth. So uh, well, that's one of the things we're, is on our list to see if there's another better app for verbal translations. But definitely when you're looking at Japanese menus and stuff, it works quite well for that. In terms of power, yeah, the power it is a bit, um, I think they have 100 versus 120. And, and they don't, if you have a three prong plug, you'll need an adapter for that. Uh, in, in most places in Japan, it's just the, two prongs um, so I think for like cell phones and that kind of stuff all those are two prongs anyway so that shouldn't be a problem there's no voltage issue but uh, um, if you have a laptop or something then there will be an, you would need to have an adapter um, and I think in Japan there's a lot of places that have like a, it's not a very complicated adapter I don't know what this cord is for, but uh, it has a three prong input and a two prong output effectively. So that's kind of what I use for my laptop. I still figured out what this is for. Maybe it's for the ground, I don't know. But uh, but yeah, that's basically all you need. Like this this two prong is similar to any other two prong ones. For, yeah. So your cell phones and stuff will work for that for sure. But oh, if you have good. a three prong, then you need to have this kind of a uh, yeah, because that's, because a long time ago when we and my family went to Italy, we had to get an adapter because the voltage is very high. So I'm just hoping Japan is not like that. Yeah. 
And uh, how much walking is involved? That's another question. Uh, some of the sites, especially in Kyoto, uh, like some of those are very old temples. And uh, so I, the, from what I remember going to them in Kyoto, you, there is some walking around for those kind of temples. So um, uh, I think, Julia, that's one thing we'll have to notice what kind of special accommodations there could be for um, like uh, mobility impaired or uh, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Just get a sense as to what kind of distance is involved. I think. Kiyomi Zudetta, I remember that was quite a bit of walking around, I believe. <laughs> and then the same stairs. with the, the yeah. golden, golden one pavilion too. There's kind of a pond you're walking around. But, uh... okay. um, are there an, an entrance fees to get into the shrines? Yes, typically um, the bigger ones they do. Um, I think the tour is covering that if it's part of the tour. The, mm. the tour package is... If it's on the tour. Yeah, I will confirm that then. Um, okay, any other questions before we go to the debate? Um, okay, so that looks good. Um, the answer was 75% um, was May 7th, and then 21% was May 10th. 4%, um, so one person um, was other. So I think we're gonna go with May 7th. I just wanna ask for those May 10th people, does that mean, um, um, are you able to come even though it's May 7th or would you be um, like, no, I think I wanna. Actually, just one question. If it's May 7th though, and you wanna come earlier, you're actually gonna be traveling during Golden Week. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if it's better to maybe say May 10th and if you wanna come earlier, come May 7th. So that you're not in that golden week period because, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think you want to be there during golden week. I agree. So, can it's I change golden week everywhere in Japan? I agree too. <laughs> I changed my mind. I, I'm changing my vote too. Yeah. Yeah. May, May 10th. May 10th. <laughs> yeah. What golden week is is kind of like it's kind of a kind of a holiday area. So then everyone travels in Japan. So then. You know, finding hotels, uh, maybe your transportation, the train, like that could be. I've never been there during Golden Week, but I suspect that's what it kind of is. Awful. You probably don't want to be there during your Golden Week. So I, I think just based on that, we'll probably recommend if you're going to travel, we'll set it for May the 10th. And if you want to come a few days earlier, then you can do that on the 7th or 8th. Uh, and we'll try to coordinate that. So we'll say, okay, those that are kind of traveling and they want two or three days, maybe they're going to plan to arrive on the 7th or 8th. We'll let everyone know. And then that way, if you want to all come kind of at the same time, you can come on the 7th. And mm -hmm. then what you can do is, if you want to explore Tokyo, if you we can make some optional tours on the, in the Shibini case. Because uh, we don't really have a lot of time in Tokyo based on this itinerary. So then you can kill off some time in Tokyo beforehand. And then afterwards, you can either leave from Osaka or Tokyo or this last year. Can I just ask what other would have been? Because it was kind of hard to know if I wanted other it, when of those three options. Would it have been later in May or was other meaning something else? Probably later in May, but um, that would mean um, we won't be able to choose the date today. Um, and then I will have to go back to the person. He's actually on um, vacation right now. So I, I don't know when he will come back. But yeah, okay. that, that was a plan if there were so many others. Um, then we'll have to redo this again. I see. Yeah. Okay. We're actually Thank targeting you. about 25 to 30 participants on this one. Uh, so obviously, if there's more people, then we might be able to add another option later on in May. Although I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to be on two tours in May, but uh, I'll definitely be on the first one for sure. Uh, but uh, we'll see what kind of feedback we get. Um, again, if there's more than 30 people, Julia will have to ask the tour company if they can maybe do two tours simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that might be another way to do that. I have another question. If Golden Week is the week of May um, 5th, which is the Monday, then whether our tour starts on the 7th or the 10th, we're going to be arriving during Golden Week. Is that right? No. If you do arrive on the 7th, you're fine because it ends at the 5th. It ends at the 5th. Ends at the 5th. It's from April 29th to Monday, uh, to May 5th. 
Oh, I see. So Golden Week is the week before. Yeah, yeah. Week before. So Golden Week doesn't affect either of these dates. Thank you. I misunderstood. Oh, good. Okay. Um, let's see other questions. Okay. Yes, that's it. Any oh, other they, questions? Uh, there's a, so somebody did mention the Yokohama Migration Museum. Uh, I am definitely interested in that part. Uh, so Yokohama is close to Tokyo, uh, but it's not part of the tour as it stands now. But if people are arriving a day or two earlier and want to visit that, um, I, we can definitely, I am quite keen on visiting that as well. So um, if you are arriving a few days earlier, let's say, and then maybe the day before the trip, you feel up for a little side trip to Yokohama um, to visit that place, we can definitely put that in. Right? I definitely want to see that. Awesome. Um, any other questions? We have seven minutes. No, maybe oh, five minutes. I have a question. What's the next step? So we confirmed dates. Looks like we're going to go with the second date. Um, are you going to send out a final kind of price list and we're going to start booking our flights? Just we have, yeah, we have to get the um, how many people are participating to get the price. So I will send the date to the um, to Japan and then they will probably tell me the next steps and then yeah. I will do whatever, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, I think from our, our side, um, we'd like, you know, I think our cutoff date for tour participation will be February 28th uh, and a deposit will be required. Um, mm -hmm. And then based on that, we can confirm the bookings. But obviously, if, if all, you're, all of you are keen to get going on this sooner rather than later, like essentially, um, I guess it depends on the price point. I think logically the 15, well, if we can get 20 people for sure, then I think that would be enough to confirm the trip. And then if we can get up to 25, it's about a, it's a couple hundred dollars cheaper for everybody when we get to the 25 threshold. But, um, you know, we can go with as low as 10, but the pricing is it's about 4,500 per person, 10 people. It's about 3,900 for 15. Uh, 3700 for 20 and about 3500 for 25 so obviously if you confirm more people the price will drop but if you're okay like saying well i'm, I'm willing to go for 3900 and the price drops and more people come then that's even better than uh, yeah we can definitely confirm the trip soon uh, kevin a friend of mine jan wong suggested that i fly to japan with zip air z-i-p air which yes. is JL's discount airline. Uh, what do you think of Zip Air? Uh, I've never flown it, but uh, Japan Airlines is a reputable airline. Um, and I have heard that the, the rates could be significantly cheaper with that. So, yeah, um, yes, uh, she said it would be. It, uh, she, Jan Wan used to be the China correspondent for the Globe and Mail. And uh, she said that it was like, like, significantly cheaper yeah it's cheaper but you do have to pay the carry-on and the food and everything they they will not um provide food so you have to have everything like even water so that's why it's cheap yeah it sounds like you're I know, that, <laughs> I know that insurance isn't included but if there are enough of us that wanted us to have insurance, did, did, uh, do you have a, a, a relationship with a travel agency or is there, are there group packages for something like that? Because um, especially for people that are seniors, it's it's uh, really expensive after one week to have travel insurance and this trip is longer than a week. And um, it's something to really think about, I think. Mm, I can talk to the coordinator, it, I know they, didn't include the insurance, so I'm not sure if that's negotiable or, yeah. It could be an add-on that could be an option, perhaps. Like, I think it'll probably be an option because I know some people have already coverages either through their work or mm -hmm. maybe personal coverages or whatever. But uh, uh, yeah, definitely ask the tour company if they offer that. Um, obviously, okay, great. Uh, agent would be a factor, but... Uh, yeah, we can see what kind of options we do. Definitely recommend having insurance. Uh, Julia or Kevin, can we, so can we start uh, planning our flights based on, so May 10th, 
uh, departure from Narita and then ending in Osaka May 19th. Would that be right? Yes. Okay. Let's, well, let's get, let's get yep, a quote from the tour company then, Julia. Yeah. I uh, wouldn't book anything yet, just just so I, I want to hear the confirmation from the tour company in Japan. So, okay. Yeah. Good, thanks. I just wanted to check on that. Mm -hmm. And so I think with the numbers, we'll, I think the deposit is about $300 that we're looking for. So I think uh, the next steps would be for us to kind of put together a uh, registration form. And then if you have that with the deposit, it is refundable if you cancel before a certain number of days. So we'll give you that whole terms and conditions. But I think mm -hmm. we will confirm the booking of the tour based on, I think, the deposits received so that we can have confirmation of that. And then once the deposit's been received, the hotel... We can sign the contract with the tour company. Uh, they will give us the final price. And then if everyone's agreeable for that, then we can say, okay, here's the date. And they, they'll, they'll wait for the deposits before booking anything. So I think that's probably the best. Uh, once we confirm uh, that we have enough people for it, we will sign the contract and then uh, we'll confirm all of this. Okay, so you'll let us know when we can start yes. booking, booking flights. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, uh, Mariko? Yes, Sarah, yeah, I know you already mentioned about the dates. So are the dates really confirmed? Will be really May 7 or another day like May 10? So I just want, just just wonder if it's, the date is confirmed. So we, we kind of decided May 10th. Yes, um, but, yeah. Yeah, but um, I will confirm with the tour company and then I will send you all the email. So. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Sorry, when I asked the, uh, the poll, I misread the question. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm just a bit tired. <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay, if there's none, it is 708, 701. <laughs> so um, I will post this recording and um, upload it on YouTube. I will send out the email that uh, we scheduled to May 10th, but it's not confirmed yet. So try not to book it. You can book it, but probably um, book the refundable. So um, yeah, so I will do that. And we'll probably see you next year, January. So have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you so much for attending the meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all your work. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye.